welcome everybody. Welcome to the PyTorch conference. Um, today we're going to be talking about torch.distributed.pipelining. So this is a new library, new sub package that was introduced in the uh, torch.distributed library in 2.4. Uh, my name's Howard. My name's Kurt Owen. We are both from the PyTorch distributed team. All right, so to start, what is pipeline parallelism exactly? Uh, pipeline parallelism is a form of model parallelism. So imagine that you have a model and it's too big to fit on a single GPU. What you can do is you can cut the model. So in this example, we're cutting the model into four different segments. And so you have the first quarter of the model in stage one and the last quarter in stage four, and then you also have the, the middle stages. Um, now at this point, you could pass in a mini batch and kind of feed it sequentially through the model. Uh, model. Um, but this is rather naive and not very efficient because only one stage can process that mini batch at a time. And all the other ones will be idling. So the idea with pipeline parallelism is you take that mini batch and you split that also into micro batches. And now with uh, now you can take these micro batches and kind of fill up the pipeline, so to speak. Um, so you can see this kind of data flow of mini batches, oh, sorry, micro batches, and also this is for forward, but also you can do similarly for backward. Yeah, in addition to cutting your model into smaller pieces so that they can uh, fit on devices, there are also a couple other scenarios where uh, pipelining can help. For example, if your uh, model is uh, sequential processing by its nature, and but you want some uh, concurrency, you can use uh, pipelining. Second, we all know that fast links like Envilinks do not extend everywhere. Uh, so if you hit the boundary of Envilink uh, fast links, you can uh, turn to pipelining to hide your communication latency. Last but not least, um, if you want to scale the number of workers in case of, say, large-scale chaining, uh, we all know that the local computation will become smaller and smaller, and in one day it may not be enough to cover your uh, weight exchange uh, latency or gradient exchange latency as in DDP. So in this case, if we uh, switch to transmitting activations, uh, its size actually will come down as your uh, local batch size comes down as well. So it's a great way to scale your large scale chaining. So what does this new uh, package in Touch provide? First of all, we provide a rich library of schedules. For example, uh, Gpipe 1F1B, Interleaf 1F1B. We also implemented uh, some of the new schedules from uh, literature like uh, LoopFS. Uh, and zero bubble, and you can pick any of this and use it out of box. Second, for your convenience, uh, we also provide a model cutting front end. So in the case that you have a full model, but you don't want to rewrite it into a uh, stages form. Uh, lastly, uh, a new feature coming later this year, uh, we are also opening up our stack uh, in the sense that we can accept your customized uh, module representation and be your execution backend. So Howard, can you show us some examples of using the, our uh, APIs? Yeah, definitely. Let's uh, dive into the APIs. So um, this is under torch.distributed.pipelining. Uh, first, we have the concept of a pipeline stage. So remember, this is kind of like a model segment or a model chunk. Um, so you have to pass in the stage model, but you also pass in other metadata like the stage index, which is basically like the stage ID, num stages, uh, devices, and also like an example input uh, or example activation. Once you have your stage, uh, you can run a schedule. So similarly, you can also import a schedule. So this is importing gpipe. And what you can do is create a schedule by passing in the stage and the number of micro batches that you expect that schedule to process. Um, and then here we also create an example input. So this is just a random end of the batch size. Um, and to actually run the schedule, we call this dot step function. So you can think of this as processing the entire mini batch of data, um, but it will automatically split that, that x uh, in this example, into the n micro batches. And you can also see for rank zero, uh, we pass in the data, but all the other ranks will have the data communicated through them. And this is uh, for the forward pass. We can also enable the backward pass by passing in the loss function into the schedule constructor. And similarly, for the last stage, we have to pass in the target values in order to compute that loss. And so, yeah, to recap, we have pipeline stages, pipeline schedules, um, the schedules take in the stages, 
but what if you can't or don't want to split the model manually? For example, if you're importing the model from Hugging Face, um, you don't really have access to the model code. And so that's kind of a big problem, right, Cup? Yeah, so uh, that's how uh, we provide this uh, cutting tool to help, right? Uh, this is a printout of the model you just downloaded, uh, Llama for Causal LM, and as you can see, it's pretty uh, hierarchical, and uh, it's maybe hard to cut in the middle of the hierarchies. And in this example, let's say we want to cut here uh, at the hierarchy called llama decoder layer, and we want to say cut uh, per every 10 layers. How do we do that? Um, we provide a marker called split point, and with this marker, uh, user can write a split spec, uh, in addition to reform, like just give us a few uh, FQNs and tell us that, hey, this is the starting point of a new stage. And with this uh, specification, uh, we can use this pipelining.pipeline API to cut the full model, which is Llama here, uh, into a pipeline representation. So what does this pipeline representation give you? Um, it provides an API called get stage module. And uh, if you pass a uh, stage index uh, to this API, it will return the corresponding NN dot module for that stage. All right, very cool. So it's pretty flexible in terms of creating stages, and it's also pretty flexible in creating schedules. So this is a representation of a schedule in table form. Uh, each row represents a rank or a device, and each column represents a unit of computation. And so you can kind of see this is a one forward, one backward, where we have a, for a bunch of forward passes, and then we kind of like interleave the forwards and backwards together. Um, so what we do in, in our library is that we turn this into a schedule intermediate representation and have an execution engine process this kind of IR. And so we actually welcome the community to also you know, create new schedules, uh, contribute in this area, because there's a lot of state-of-the-art research in how to like, reduce these kind of white spaces, which is the pipeline bubble. Yeah, speaking about community, we uh, our project won't be here if without our partner support. Uh, Hugging Face is one of our uh, big supporter from day one, and uh, our APIs has been integrated into the Hugging Face Accelerate library. Uh, on the right hand side is one uh, small script example showing how you can use a Hugging Face API called Prepare PP to use this functionality on downloaded Hugging Face models. We're also partnering with Torch Titan to demonstrate 3D Parallel, that's FSDP plus Tensor Parallel plus Pipeline Parallel, and also Torch Chat to just you know, run your LLMs on you know, any device. So uh, in summary, in PyTorch, we try very hard to make parallelism simple, so uh, please give us a try if you want to make your model parallel uh, without a lot of work. And here's our documentation and tutorial. Thank you. Thank you We're so ready much. for questions. <laughs> oh, okay, we have time for some Q&A, so yeah, let us know. Also, we'll be around to answer questions. I think there's a coffee break right now, so you, if you want coffee too, you can, you can leave, but <laughs> welcome to any questions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can you use the mic behind you? Hello, hello. Yeah, I have a question. So basically, we have two modes. One is training and one is inference. How would you find these two modes of inference and training, sharding strategy different, or like, do you specifically optimize for it? So, two, so there's two modes of uh, training. Uh, there's basically, yeah, two modes of calling this API. One is for training, one is for inference. Um, I mean, it's actually, if you think of inference, it's kind of like, a, you know, it's, it's half the problem of training, right? Because you only have to deal with the forward pass. Yeah. So there's really not that much difference. It's up to the user to how they want to split the model. If their, their model can be split up in a, you know, a more efficient way for inference, then you know, we offer the flexibility for them to do that. And the schedule for them uh, to perform inference is just calling forward passes. And we do all the communication for them. And the other aspect to that is in training, you are, you are the author yourself. And you are more likely to have a stage module ready, so you can directly plot the stage module to the schedule. But mm -hmm. in inference, uh, for example, in this hugging face scenario, you probably yeah. get the full model, and that's why uh, you can use our front end to do the end-to-end -end, uh, workflow. Okay, got it. Thank you. 
Hi. Uh, from your previous slides, I guess you had the autocausal LM. Is this ready to use or experiment with today? Uh, yeah, so uh, Hugging Face has already integrated this functionality, okay. but as you can see, um, but you know, it's limited to models that's traceable today. Uh, so, but we are working together. But this is the base class, I take, right? You said something about custom class that's coming up, custom models. Can yeah, you explain uh, a little more? The uh, custom schedule is coming up. Gotcha. But okay. uh, this previous feature of auto cutting that's already available. And uh, how do I think about uh, this with uh, uh, mesh representation that uh, coming up in other parts? Um, can I like define a mesh or device configuration, and then is that a part of the schedule definition, or is that a part of the pipeline staging definition? So uh, yeah, yeah, so usually we use the mesh to define multiple. Uh, you know, dimensions of parallelism. So you, if you have 3D parallelism, you'll have like a data parallel uh, dimension, a tensor parallel dimension, and pipeline parallel dimension. So kind of the mesh is more used to represent like which ranks are going to communicate with each other. And the schedule is orthogonal to that. It, the schedule just determines um, for you which ranks are uh, basically sending and receiving. And so that's all kind of done under the hood. And you can also like, configure it as well in the uh, custom schedule. But for like kind of the uh, default schedules, we do that all for you. Sounds good, thanks. Uh, last question. One last question. <laughs> yeah, my question was with respect to the model cutting. Uh, how does it happen with respect to a composite model? So I can see there's like a self attention and an MLP layer. Does the model cutting cut across the self attention and sh probably shards that across uh, many pieces and does the same for the MLP layer as well? Uh, actually, um, you can cut it at any, in anywhere of your model uh, for, because uh, we cut at the point where the specified FQN, like fully qualified name, is uh, triggered in the forward pass of the full model. So it can be uh, layers FQN, it can be uh, any linear inside the layer if you want to cut a layer into two as well. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, Ko's referring to this uh, kind of API here where they're specifying the, the FQN, which is, you know, Models dot layers and then the, the the number layer ID. All right, that's the last question. And if you have a question, Luca, we can talk <laughs> offline. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.